Hello, and welcome to Conservation Chronicles. My name is Heather Smith, and I'm the president of a nonprofit organization, Pennsylvania Rhino Conservation Advocates, also known as PARCA. PARCA has a very specific focus on saving the rhinoceros. PARCA was formed in 2016 after I visited Namibia and came back knowing that I had to become involved in conservation. What I had seen and experienced in Namibia did not just move me, it deeply impacted me. As Brian Jackman said, Africa changes you forever, like nowhere on earth. Once you have been there, you will never be the same. Our work with PARCA has now taken us to Botswana, South Africa, and Kenya. Along the way, we have made friendships that have also deeply impacted us. We've become friends with those in the rhino conservation world whose work we support, but also with safari guides and staff in the camps we have been fortunate enough to visit. One of those friends is Komatsu Batani. BT grew up on the northern part of the Okavango Delta in Botswana in a settlement called Katamaga. He grew up with his extended family and they lived amongst wild animals buffalo, lions, elephants, leopards. He was taught as a young child how to identify animal tracks and what to do if he came across dangerous animals. At the age of nine, BT left his village for school. He ultimately went on to become a police officer, but his heart was always with nature and wildlife. He went on then to live his dream, and he received a certificate and went to advanced guiding courses. He trained in geology, astronomy, botany, advanced walking in the wild, and of course, all kinds of animals. BT has worked at Mashatu Lodge and with Great Plains Conservation. I met BT, as he is known, on my first safari in Botswana. BT and I have had adventures with hippos, elephants, and buffalo that I will never forget. And he has also shown me lions, cheetah, rhinos, dozens and dozens of birds, antelopes, and my very favorite in the bush, warthogs. I have had the pleasure not only to have him visited with me a second time in his country, but also to have him visit us in the U.S. We have become fast friends over our shared love of nature and animals. We decided to partner on Conservation Chronicles as a way for us to share our love with a broader audience. With that introduction, our first in this series is going to be a talk on human wildlife conflict. And now I'll turn it over to BT. Yeah, let me take this wonderful time to talk about human wildlife conflict. Human wildlife conflict. And uh, someone can ask himself, what is human wildlife conflict? So I will describe or I will explain this in my own ways. Human wildlife conflict is a conflict whereby community blames wildlife for intruding into their space and causing lots and lots of damage. Then and on the other side of uh, wildlife is a conflict where wildlife department or the government of Botswana are saying that the community are against the wildlife. The community, they don't follow the right procedures. Instead of right following the right procedures of seeing what to do, about wildlife they kill them they poison them so these two things causes a conflict that is why it's called human wildlife conflict because the community are not happy about wildlife and the wildlife officers are not happy about the community so let me talk about what causes this conflict. I'll start by the cause of the conflict and at the end I'll try to talk about what can be done in order to solve this conflict. One, I will start by wildlife, the conflict that they start. Uh, 
you will find that sometimes elephants leave natural, their natural environment uh, to the community villages. Then they get there and they feed on crops. They feed on crops. Uh, they damage the fences. Sometimes ahead they even push down some structures. Another comfort from wildlife uh, lions leave their natural environment to the local communities uh, to kill the goats, to kill the cows. Another one is believed that uh, leopard also leaves their natural environment to the community to kill the cows, kill the goats. Uh, same to the hyenas, same to the cheetahs, same to the wild dogs, same to the jackals. So they believe all the predators is a problem. They cause problem to the community. That's what the community believes. So this is a big problem that arises here between the community and the predator. Listen to me, listen to me very well and get this very, very, very well. We have about these uh, five predators, uh, lion, leopards, cheetah, wild dogs, and jackals. So if you look at these predators, they have different behaviors. Some of the predators are nocturnal. Nocturnal means that an, an animal is only active or mostly active at night. Then some predators are adonal or diurnal, which means they are active during the day. So there is a big confusion here when it comes to the community because they don't know which animal is active at night and which animal is active during the day. That's the first problem. The second problem, the local community cannot differentiate between the track of a leopard, a cheetah, or a lion. You see the problem. So, if a leopard, as a leopard is a nocturnal animal, come to the local communities, kill a goat, and goes away. The local community, once they come tomorrow morning, they look at the tracks, they see the tracks, and uh, they can't, like I said, they can't differentiate the tracks. They will be checking the tracks of this leopard. Then on the way, sometimes they miss this track of a leopard, then they come across the track of a cheetah. Then they follow this poor cheetah, they come across the cheetah, they kill it. You see where the problem comes from. A cheetah has killed a goat, I mean a leopard has killed a goat, then the local community comes to kill a cheetah. A cheetah didn't kill a goat. And another problem is that the local community they can't differentiate a leopard and a cheetah. To them, a leopard and a cheetah is one and the same thing. Cheetah is active during the day. So during the day, the cheetahs, they can't go to the, to the cattle. They can't go to the goats because it's their time. People are always around. They are natural animals. Only the leopard is the one that can come at night or a lion can come at night and kill the goats. And one main reason why these animals kill local farmers' animals is because, get me well here as well, this is what the locals are supposed to do in the evening before sunset. They have to go and collect their goats. They have to go and collect their cows. Lock them in their well done firm crops. Nothing will get into the crop. 
So what they do is that they don't collect them. They leave the goats astray in the wild. They leave the cattle astray in the wild. Then these lions come across this cattle in the wild. They come across these goats in the wild. The one that have been not uh, collected back to their crops are the ones that are mostly killed. So are you going to blame wild animals for killing your animals because you didn't put them in the crop? No. So that's the main, main, main issue. And the cases are very, very few whereby a lion come and jump into a crow and kill the cattle. The cases are very few. And with the goat here, with the goats, this is the main, main, main problem. You'll find that uh, most of the goats, goats go out during the day, the farmers release their goats, and we have uh, this creature, jackals, that are active during the day and night. And they are the main predators of goats. Jackals will kill the goats. When the farmer come, you go, you look for the track. Because they don't know the difference between the track of a jackal and a wild dog. They will come across the tracks of the wild dog, tracks the wild dogs. They come across the wild dogs, kill the wild dogs. Sometimes while they are still tracking the wild dogs, they come across the tracks of the leopard. Just because a poor leopard is a predator, they track it, they come across, they kill it. They can't leave any predator that has not yet, that has not committed an offense. So each and every predator is an enemy. So a different predator goes to kill the cows, then an innocent predator become you know, become a victim because a different predator has killed uh, the cattle or the cows. So that's the main, main problem taking place between the wildlife and the local community. So the solution is simple, very, very simple. The solution in order to solve the conflict between the people and the wildlife. First thing, this is what we have to do. We have to make the local community love these animals. They have to love these animals, and we have to do a lot of education. The local community, we have to do a lot of education. They have to understand these animals, that a lion is active at which time, uh, different tracks of lions, how do they differ, tracks of a lion from a leopard, Text of a leopard from a cheetah, text of a cheetah from a wild dog. They have to understand this. They have to know this. They also have to know the difference between a cheetah and a leopard. And they also have to know the importance of these animals in the ecosystem. What they do in the ecosystem. As well as uh, bringing foreign exchange. They have to understand that, that uh, this country is successful because of this wildlife. They attract tourists. Tourists bring money, they pay money to come and see these animals. That's the other point that can help to resolve human wildlife conflict. Another one I would say, if the government is committed and they really, really want to stop this conflict they should supply the local community with electric fence at least two lines around your farm in order to stop elephants from intruding into your farm that's the other thing electric fence the second thing uh, farmers should be encouraged to build a very strong firm cross that will disrupt lions from getting into those crows. Because if you build a very weak crow made out of branches, it's easy. It's very easy for a predator to jump in. 
So if local communities can be advised to build very strong calls, that will keep away the predators. Uh, the last one, if farmers can make sure that each and every evening their goats are collected back into the crops, their cows are collected back into the crops, we are not going to have this human conflict. Human conflict or cares because there is a bit of ignorance. I'm saying a bit of ignorance because there are lots and lots of cows that overnight outside the cross. Lots and lots of goats and sheep that's overnight outside the cross. This gives an advantage to the predators. It's the same as someone who is having a house without putting bungalow bars. Or having a house and you leave a, your house unlocked. Then criminals come, they get into your house, they steal your property. Then after that you blame the criminals. You can't blame the criminals because you didn't lock the house. So it's the same also as the wildlife. If you don't take care of your wildlife, if you don't protect them, make sure that they are in the crow, this is going to give an advantage to the predators. So those are the only points that I had for you. Thank you very much for listening. BT, that was very educational. Thank you for sharing that information with all of us. There are many of us who cannot fathom what it is like to have to live beside wild animals. We appreciate your insight on the topic. Thanks to everybody who's joining us to listen to our first Conservation Chronicles, and we hope that you'll join us for another episode very soon.